Hi guys, happy spring. I am so excited. It's spring and I'm so excited to be uh, doing these DIYs that I'm going to show you today. I'm starting off with um, a carrot, uh, making a carrot garland. I picked up these wooden carrot pieces from the Dollar Tree and I actually picked up two packs of them because it comes in a pack of eight and I am going to be using... Um, a pack. I'm going to be using nine of them. So I have a lot of oranges in my paint uh, supplies. So I was just trying to figure out what shade of orange that I wanted for the carrots. And I decided to go with a very dark, deep orange. It was also called, it was actually called terracotta. Um, so I'm going to use this as my base color for my carrots. And then I'm going to be using like a lighter orange to go over it for the designs that I decide to add to the carrots. Sideways up or down, it's all the same. We will do it, we will do it. Sweet raining on is truth is what I get from you. No matter how hard I get the Okay, so one of the things I knew I wanted to do was to have a finished look on the back. Um, so I'm going to be painting the back sides of the carrots too after the front, front side dried. And then I'm going to be painting the green tops. It's up to you whether you want to uh, paint the tops when they're still, um, when the orange is still wet, but I decided to let the orange dry and then paint the green over there. Um, I end up using a green color called Marsh Green. Um, I believe that's the shade it is, Marsh Green. And um, I just picked up, I got this one from Walmart a while back. I used this um, during my Christmas DIY. So that's the great thing about doing DIYs. Once you get like the products, like paint, you can use them for quite a few. DIY so it really makes the price of everything go down because you're not going out and buying new things every season to do your DIYs. Now I decided early on that I didn't want my carrots just to be plain boring carrots. I wanted to do designs on them so I'm going to be doing uh, three three different designs, if you would call it, on the carrots. One of them is just going to be this plain orange um, because I wanted to break up the patterns. But one of them, I'm doing these polka dots. I'm just using a paper straw to make um, circles so they would actually be good circles, not freehanding it. And then I'm going to fill in the circles with a very small paintbrush and it just looks a lot neater than me trying to freehand the circles. I am sitting at this bar trying to forget all the fun we used to have. Now for my next pattern, I knew I wanted to do stripes. So I'm going to take this same orange color um, and I'm, I want to say this orange color is tangerine. Um, and I also got this one. Now this one I think I got from Hobby Lobby, this color. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be doing stripes. I'm using my, I'm using duct tape because I am out of painter's tape and it worked perfectly fine um it didn't peel up the paint or anything like that but i did have to let each um, line dry before i did the next line and then at the very end i will go over just to make sure i have a deeper richer um color on i go over each of the stripes with a second coat of paint And for each of the patterns, I'm going to have three carrots for a total of nine uh, carrots. Um, that's why I bought two packs of the carrots, because I just wanted to do the three different 
uh, designs and have an even number of them. But you could do whatever you want it to. Um, I let everything thoroughly dry and then I lay out the pattern that I want for the carrots and then I'm going to just use twine that I had left over from I think even before Christmas I just had twine laying around my house because once you buy a, a spool of it it's like it goes forever so I usually when I'm using twine I usually wrap tape around the end but I just didn't have any scotch tape handy so I tried duct, duct tape at first that did not work very well so then I just try stringing it through without any tape which it will fray so I end up having to twist it and cut the end a few times but it does work it's just a little it takes a little bit more time to string it And this is my completed carrot garland. I am pretty in love with it. It turned out great in my opinion and it's gonna be a great addition to my decor for spring and Easter. For my next DIY, I'm gonna be making a sign for my spring coffee bar. I got this blank sign from Hobby Lobby and it goes, matches perfectly, the wood matches perfectly to other elements in my coffee bar. So I was very excited to I use my Cricut for this project, which you could use the Cricut if you have one. Otherwise, you could really use stencils and paint um, whatever wording on your sign that you want it. Um, or you could use letter stickers. Um, I have gotten letter stickers from Hobby Lobby before that I've used for various signs. So you can still do this project if you do not have a Cricut machine. So I have a special theme that I wanted for my coffee bar for spring. So I um, wanted to do a customized sign that fit the theme instead of just buying something. I didn't find, I didn't find what I was looking for anyway, and it would have been a lot more expensive. So I decided I was going to make a sign myself. It was actually kind of funny because I had this blank sign hanging on my wall in my coffee bar area for quite a while before I actually got around to doing this project. And apparently my husband thought it was very strange, but he did not ask me uh, why I had a blank sign hanging on the wall. And then when I finally got the sign done and hung it back up on the wall, he was like, oh, I thought it was strange that you had just a, um, a blank sign hanging on the wall so I don't know why he didn't just ask me uh what was going on with the blank sign but it took me a while to get around to actually doing the project but I wanted to see um how it fit where it fit and how it looked and everything before I actually got around to this Now, I definitely still consider myself a beginner um, when it comes to the Cricut, um, even though I've had it for probably about six months. I just still am consider myself a beginner. So generally, the projects are really easy. This project was easy, but I did run into some complications as far as getting the letters, the vinyl to stick to the sign. The sign has like a, a whitewash on it and it was very like powdery. So nothing wanted to really stick to the sign. So I actually have, you can see here, I actually had to use my tool to try to um, keep it from coming up because whenever I pulled my transfer tape up, the letter stickers wanted to come up also because they didn't want to stick to the wood sign. Eventually though, I got everything in place and the finished product looks really good.
After I get this first part on, I go on to my other elements. I knew I wanted to have like a coffee or tea cup, and I actually uh, created this one for a different sign that you'll see later on in this video, but that it was a little, little bit too big for that sign. So it worked perfectly for this sign. And then at the bottom, I just add my coffee and tea served daily. I did have a little uh, snafu with the C for the coffee. It just, when I was peeling it up, it's such a skinny um, lettering that the C kind of tore and um, came apart, but I just tried my best to fix it. And I think that in the end product, it's really not that noticeable. And this is the finished product. I think it's so cute. I am so excited to share with you guys my spring coffee bar in a video upcoming. So to complete my coffee bar for spring, I knew I wanted to have another sign, a smaller sign. And so I got this wooden tray, unfinished wooden tray from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna be turning it over and I'm gonna be painting it to look like a wood sign. Now, I suggest that when you go to Dollar Tree and get a tray like this to do a project like this, that you look very carefully as far as uh, if the sides are even, this one was really lopsided and I didn't realize it until I started trying to put everything together. But I am just painting it with my uh, chalk paint, my Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to be painting the front of it and the sides of it. I'm not going to do anything with the back of it because the back will not be showing. Uh, but I actually only give this one coat so I just make sure that everything is covered really well. After I paint it, I let it dry, and then I moved to my Cricut machine to create lettering um, for my sign. I decided to go with black um, permanent vinyl, and I created the saying, hop on in for a cup. Um, so I am just trying to get all of the excess vinyl off of that so that I can put my transfer tape on there and transfer it onto the sign. This is the project that I was talking about that I created um, the teacup for, but it just ended up not fitting. It would have just been too cramped. It didn't look right. Um, so I decided to use it for the previous uh, project. And this was a first when I was pulling out my transfer tape uh, it actually ripped and uh, so the A is still on the paper but it's a really easy fix I just go and add the A um, afterwards and you see me turning the wording around because I like I said I didn't notice that the the, it wasn't square and the top or side of it was just really it wasn't cut straight so I was trying to see what side would be it would be the least noticeable on and I have another project that I'm going to be using um, one of these wooden trays for and it was not cut this badly so it obviously just was a fluke for this one so I picked up these uh, wooden bunny they're called ornaments uh, from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to add those to my sign. I'm going to paint them with a black chalk paint that I picked up, oh, last year from the Dollar Tree. I've used this black chalk paint for many projects. Um, so I'm just going to paint them black to match the wording, and then I will be gluing them onto my sign. So once the paint is dried completely, I'm just going to glue this on the sign using my wood glue and then I'll let that dry completely. Mm -hmm. 
And that was super easy, right? The sign is finished, it's cute, it goes with my coffee bar theme, and it just was super cheap, super simple, and super cute. So for my next DIY, I'm going to be making a, what I call a farmer's market sign. A spoiler alert, I am going to do a kind of Peter Rabbit garden theme for one of my rooms for spring and Easter. I picked up this easel from Dollar Tree. It's unfinished, so I'm going to paint it. And for all of you guys who don't have crickets, machines this one i will not be using a cricket machine i am going to be using chalk uh, marker for this one so i'm just painting the easel um a um, teal turquoise minty green color that i mixed up for one of my other diys that you'll see coming up um, but I had quite a bit of it left over, so I decided to uh, paint it this color since it is like my favorite color. Um, so I'm going to paint both sides. I used duct tape to cover the chalkboard portion because, once again, I did not have painter's tape. Um, so this was my solution. But I, if doing it again, I don't even think I would use the duct tape because on the other side, I decided to freehand it and just wipe off anything that actually gets on the chalkboard. Uh, and it turned out just as well, if not better, than the side that I did spend taping. One of the things that I really like about this easel project is that on one side I'm going to be putting wording for spring, but on the other side I'm leaving blank right now, but I can add more wording for summertime and I can just turn it around. So I love DIY projects that can be used for more than one season. As you can see on the side that I put the duct tape on, I still had to scrape a little excess off of there. So I don't know if I would really even tape it in the, the next time I do this project. Um, so I got these carrot ornaments from the Dollar Tree also, and I'm just gonna use one of them for my sign. I'm painting it with my light orange, which is the tangerine color uh, paint and the same, uh, paint the tops of the same color as I did with my garland, which is the marsh green color. I let the carrot dry completely and then when it's dry, I'm using my wood glue to attach it to the bottom of my sign. To write on the sign, I'm using my chalk paint marker. Um, I've gotten chalk paint markers before that have not worked, but this one, it's like, it was a great set that came in, um, I got like chalkboard labels for my pantry and my spice cabinet, and it came with a set with like labels. I don't even know what brand it is, um, but it came with like a pack of four of them, and they never dry out, and I've had them for like a year and a half or so, and they just are great chalk markers. So if I can find where I got them from, I will link them below. And that is the finished product. It was simple, uh, but it's really cute and definitely reflects my garden slash farmer's market theme that I have for this spring. On to my fifth and final DIY for this video. I am going to be using one of those wooden trays from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be making another sign. Um, this one is going to be, I call my candy shop sign. 
I got inspiration for this sign on Pinterest and I tried to recreate it and put my own twist on this sign. So I'm just painting it with um, some paint that I've had for quite a while. I picked up from Walmart. I think it's called Camo Pink. Um, so I am giving it a coat, um, the front, the sides of this camo pink color. And once it's completely painted and I let it dry, I'm going to be moving on to my next elements, which are my lettering and my embellishments. I am using more of these wooden bunnies. I am painting these ones with a color called melted chocolate because I want them to look like chocolate bunnies for my candy shop. Next, I'm gonna be adding a wooden egg. Uh, this is the similar packaging. I already had gotten it out of the package because I let my kids uh, paint some. Um, but it's the same like wooden ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I am painting one to match this minty color that I printed from my uh, Cricut. Uh, so I am using turquoise paint and my marsh green paint and some white to try to create this same mint green color, which is a lot harder than it sounds. I really only needed to paint one egg, uh, but I kept having to add paint to make the perfect shade that I was looking for. So I ended up just painting some extra eggs and also painting that farmer's market sign that I did with um, in my previous DIY. I thought I got pretty close to the color, that mint color, but once it dried, it actually still turned out darker and more blue instead of green hued than I um, than I wanted it to be, but oh well. I just wanted it to be a candy, uh, look like a candy egg, and after this uh, minty color dries, I'm going to go back with my melted chocolate paint and I'm going to just add little dots on the egg to uh, make it kind of speckled. Get the dots on there. I go back over with some excess paint because I just kind of wanted to have a 3D effect. Um, I printed out um, lettering from my Cricut machine in both white and that mint color. So on the top, I'm just adding cotton tail with my white vinyl. And then I'll have my candy company with the mint colored vinyl. Once all my wood elements are dry, I am going to use my wood glue to attach the two chocolate bunnies and the candy egg.
the last part of this sign is to add my final lettering at the bottom which just says sweets and treats uh, so cottontail candy company sweets and treats and then I would just let everything dry and it will be complete And these are all my DIYs from today's DIY video for spring and Easter. I hope that you guys try one or more of these. Um, if you liked what you saw, please don't forget to put the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I would love it if you guys join my little YouTube family and happy DIYing. Bye.